Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar. Regenerative medicine is something which can bring to your patients and your clinic a tremendous amount of goodness, success, both materially, spiritually, in, in every single aspect. Patients will benefit, you will enjoy the pride of helping a lot of people, and at the same time, you will be able to, at any given time, realize that the profits that can be made from such a successful campaign can be very beneficial. So what is this guide and what does it do? I've spent a tremendous amount of time in the many years that I've been a consultant to always try to perfect and find out what is it that we can use, what are the tools that we can implement, what are the, the paraphernalia or materials that we can use to always make some things even better from a management standpoint. So what I'd like to do is this. First and foremost, to start by saying that if you don't have a plan, no plan is, as the saying goes, a plan to fail. You must be prepared. And even if you've been already using a regenerative medicine program, if you find yourself stuck, if you find yourself in a position where it's not benefiting, it's not growing, it's not the effect that you anticipated, then you have to realize that part of it is because the plan may not be the right thing. The plan that you've already organized may not be what you've done and it needs to be changed. Preparation on purpose means that you have to be prepared to know what is the purpose of this program that you're in engendering. What is it going to do? How is it going to help people? And if it is going to help people, to what effect? And what results are you expecting? Discipline, as it says, is the bridge between action and achievement. By being disciplined, you will be able to successfully develop campaigns. You have to understand that in order for you to successfully develop this protocol and make it happen, so that many patients, not just two or three patients a month, not just five, 50, 60 patients a year, but we're talking about dozens and dozens and dozens of patients on a regular basis, will come to your office and will clearly, literally, clearly benefit from the, the, the program and at the same time will benefit you, both from a spiritual standpoint because you would have helped a lot of people, from an ethical standpoint because this is your job as a doctor, and from a financial standpoint, because after all, you've invested time and money, and so therefore you want to see your, your, your results. So what was prepared for you is a Google Drive. Google Drive, in, in the Google Drive, are multiple concepts that have been placed there specifically, and I've worked very hard with this marketing company to make sure that every single step is geared towards helping you maximize all your services. So you want to make sure that you access your Google Drive, which will be given to you, and you have to use it one step at a time. And let me explain some of the things, some of the features that you'll have to pay attention to. One is the Facebook campaign. Now we realize that Facebook will attract a lot of leads. We understand that. But what, what are those leads and where are they coming from? You have to make sure that you get involved. Getting involved means that you're going to, on a regular basis, access your Facebook page. I would say at least two times a per day minimum. I know some doctors that are very successful, they're accessing it literally every couple of hours. They're posting pictures, they're posting stories, they're posting uh, uh, other, and they're sharing other posts, all kinds of actions. You want to make sure that you're continuously active, that you're involved in the Facebook. It can't just be a marketing tool. It has to be something that becomes interactive between you and and the other uh, patients that you're attracting. Another thing is you'll have brochures that were given to you. You want to know the brochures themselves. Does your staff understand the content of the brochures? Do you know what these brochures are for? They've been literally developed for your office and these brochures have been conscientiously and in a, in a way that is very professional developed so that you can use them. But if you don't understand the content, what would be the benefit to that? If you do, the, do these brochures a favor by just sit, you know, sitting them on the counter, how, what does that benefit? How does that help anybody? That's not what you want. What you really want to make sure is that every single person who comes into the office has access to these brochures. They read them. Your staff has to know about them. You have to know about them. And use them continuously to promote what the services are all about. You'll also be given flyers. You want to make sure the flyers should be updated on a regular basis. 
you are given multiple flyers. Every couple of weeks, these flyers need to be interchanged. Take them down, put new ones, put them in the reception room. Make sure you take them into uh, some of the treatment room. Put them possibly in the hallway. Have them on your website. A attach them as an email. Post them on your Facebook. Use them continuously. These flyers have been professionally designed in order to promote and continuously bring up the awareness about what the concept of regenerative medicine is all about. Same thing with the newspaper ads. Are you making sure that these ads are beneficial? If the ad does not attract patients for you, don't keep on paying that uh, printing company. It doesn't make sense. You want to know for a fact that the ads are attracting a certain amount of patients. So track the results. Track uh, uh, what, what they're doing. And if the ad doesn't work, perhaps you need to change the ad. Maybe you need to change some of the wording, maybe the pictures, maybe the placement of the ad. Uh, needs to be changed in the newspaper. Maybe you need to change the newspaper instead of taking a newspaper that is, you know, widely accepted in the city, you want to take something that's more focused into one of the neighborhoods. You might want to do that. Another thing is pr promotional videos. These promotional videos have been worked on. Trust me, we have spent hours, hours, literally, about the text, the content, the delivery, uh, all of this. They're done for you. They're, they've been made professionally for you to be used at a time that is most appropriate. And make sure that those videos themselves are you know, showing the content that you want. And how many people are downloading the video? How many people are watching this video? All of this can be tracked. And all of this is on your Google Drive. More things are on your Google Drive, such as also the ebook downloads. They've been given to you, and then people will download them at any given time from your website. So you want to make sure. Are the downloads working? And if so, is there a time and day that they're more downloaded? If you look at your Google Analytics, it will tell you that X amount of people downloaded them Tuesday between 3 in the afternoon and 5, and five in, the, in the afternoon. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if you find that out and you see that indeed there are many more people that download on Tuesday afternoon, know that this is your hot spot, know that this is an important time. You'll want to record that and pay attention to this. Seminars. The seminars themselves will be attending, will be attended by, by many people in your office. There'll be a staff member, there'll be the presenter. There'll also be possibly a speaker, someone that presents, represents the, uh, the, the product. You'll want to make sure that the attendees themselves, as they come to the seminar, are they followed up? Have you run a survey, perhaps, of how the seminar was, how en they enjoyed it? If they did not sign up, why is that? What was the question of why they, uh, they didn't sign up for the program that you've offered them? If it is a good price and if it is beneficial, and if it is, as you say that you, at your seminar, as great as it is, why is it that this patient didn't sign up? You can't just say, well, they can't afford it. You have to work around that. Perhaps you may have to change the price. Perhaps you may have to change the arrangement. Ask yourself those questions. Are there any other suggestions? All of this will be kept up on your, um, on your Google Drive. Now, there's another way also to boost your Facebook page and the outcome of Facebook themselves. Number one, review the ads. Your marketing company is going to promote all kinds of ads. Now, they're professional at doing that, so I wouldn't mess with the ads themselves. But the content of the ad, do you have an idea? Do you have perhaps suggestions to what you're thinking could be done? Make sure that it matches your philosophy. Make sure that the information that is in there is appropriate for what you want. Make sure that it complements the, uh, the office uh, uh, protocols and systems that you're offering. It has to match. So communicate all of this to your marketing company. Communicate with them and let them know what you're doing. Be active. Be active on Facebook. Don't just let it go. Create personal and family posts at all times. Post things about where you are, what you do, what you're updating, things that, that you've visited, the classes that you've gone to, the seminars that you've attended, the things that you bought, the new equipment that you've exchanged, the new staff member that you've trained. All of this needs to be on Facebook. People love to see interaction. People love to see that you're involved and you're constantly updating that information. Create interactive content. You may ask a question. How many of you are going on vacation this summer and are you worried about you know, where to go? Here's, here's my suggestion. And then you'll see people interact. You'll see people comment, like, 
or, or perhaps go back and share that information. The more interaction there is, the higher and the more boosted your information will be and therefore the greater results you'll get from your Facebook. As long as they know that what you're asking or what you're speaking about is something that will benefit them, then they'll share that information with other people. All right, so let's talk about maximizing all on the follow-up results themselves for the patients. Now we know for a fact that the patients or potential clients, leads as they're called, they've come in and perhaps attended your seminar or they've sat with you at a lecture or perhaps even on a report of finding. Ask them, are they, are they involved in this conversation? You want to make sure there's some kind of communication. You want to make sure that if they have a question, they should ask you. And if you don't know the answer, you need to review it. But engage them at all times in conversation. Invite them perhaps to come to your office for a consultation. If you had the seminar, and at the seminar they were able to view uh, the information, the presentation that you've given, perhaps invite them to come to, to visit the office. If they're not willing to do some of these things, at least you need to have some interaction with them. Make it a friendly outcome. Make it something so that they believe that you are not only working with them, but also sharing some of that information with them. Find out why the patient has not signed up. There's nothing wrong with asking them. Mr. Johnson, I understand that you came to this seminar and you have spent time listening to my presentation. At the same time, I realized that it was quite complex. May I ask you this question? Why have you not signed up? I mean, I know that you have this condition and I know that you will benefit from it. Can you perhaps share with me the reason why you haven't signed up? You see, engaging in the conversation and asking it in a polite manner, something with, done with integrity, kindness and patience, the person will respond. They'll say, well, I'll tell you the truth or let me give you my reason. And now you can have that conversation with them. And from there, you'll be able to realize whether or not this is something you can fix. They may say to you, I'm just not sure. I didn't quite believe everything that you said. I didn't quite understand it. No problem. How about if I give you more material? Or perhaps we could sit down, you and I together, and you can answer, you can, uh, you can ask me any questions that you have. If the patient wasn't confident, they say, well, I don't know. It seems to me that your doctor or the presenter didn't quite explain this about the practitioner. I don't think that your practitioner was able to uh, convince me that they have the know-how on how to do this procedure. Whatever it is, we can fix it. We can talk about it. But that's only if you're interacting with them and sharing that information with them at the same time. Another thing is to encourage testimonials. There's nothing wrong with asking a patient, would you mind if I could at any given time, any given time, would you mind if I could ask you for a testimonial? Nothing wrong with that. You know, it's interesting. I just published my book. I'm very proud of it after a couple of years of working on it. And I've sent it to some friends and some people may have gotten it. You know, some people have bought it. And at the same time, my next question to them, when they'll text me back or they'll send me an email, I read it, it's amazing, I love it, I, um, it was incredible, or I, you know, I, I would love to read it and, and get back with you. And I'll ask them a simple question. When you have time, if you don't mind, would you mind just giving me a short quote or something of what you think about the book? First of all, I would like to know how they feel about it. Was that something they benefited from? Second, it would greatly enhance my writing skills and all of my efforts if they gave me some criticism or perhaps even some compliments. Either one. I'm willing to listen. It's something that's great. Now, a lot of the people will say something very kind. And I have patients, I have friends of mine who have sent me and said, this is a great book. I loved it. I finished it. Or, you know, this chapter was incredible. You know what? I appreciate that. There's nothing wrong with you asking for this. You're delivering a service and you want to know, have they benefited from that? So make possibly a video before or after. You might want to get the patient, you know, when they come into the office to let you know, this is how I'm, you know, I'm really suffering. I'm not able to do certain uh, activities. I'm not able to bend over to pick up my grandchildren or I have always a hard time driving. Okay, well then tape those few two, three minutes and shorten it or record them and have that and then do this after the treatment of you within a few weeks or so after and find out the before and after. It is so beneficial. 
and that could be displayed everywhere you want. Have the patient also perhaps write a letter or give you a quote, and you could put that quote in the newspaper. Let them know. You don't have to put their full name. You could just put an initial, J E, you know, just their initial, and then perhaps the city, and it's something like this. That way they are not to be found, and it's as personable as can be. <clears throat> now, you also want to play in testimonials on Facebook page. You want to post that information. Not necessarily with their, with their picture or their name. As I said, you could be, it could be kept anonymous, but at least that information is there. You could put it on your YouTube channel if the person allows you to play their video, and it's a showing face, it's a showing body. There's a portrait of them, or they're, they're live. Something that can, that can be said, it could be put on your YouTube channel, which will be seen also on your, on your website. And then it could be shown also if you have a screen in the front reception room, which I'm going to discuss in a few minutes. If you have a screen and it displays the information of the services that you have, you may want to play that. So when patients come in and listen to the information while they're waiting for the doctor or their treatment or the therapist or what have you, in the screen in the reception room, they have things to look at. It makes a big difference. Another thing that you want to do is make sure you promote more interest. You want to promote the interest. You want to become an expert in regenerative therapy. Learn more about it. Read more about it. Whenever you have time, pick up another book, pick up another flyer, pick up another study. And if you read the study, read it again and again. Become an expert in it. The more you understand the concept, the better you become and the easier it becomes for you to, uh, to generate that information and share it with others. Review regularly your presentation. If you are making a seminar, which I highly suggest that you do because the seminars have found to be the best way to attract as many people as possible, review the presentation, change it, perhaps add pictures, or perhaps in the, in the presentation you want to show a one or two minute clip or of a movie or something that lets them know. Distribute some of the flyers. Review that presentation regularly to make it better. Invite qualified speakers. You don't have to be the only speaker. You can invite other people that will speak about the information and share. Imagine if you have a professor from a university that will come in and share some of that information. And by the way, that speaker doesn't have to be live at your office. Let's say you know that there is a very famous, well-known uh, and qualified expert in this field who lives in, in another state, across the country or across the world for that matter. You could definitely call them on the phone and interview them. And if they want to be on the video, which most experts don't mind being uh, you know, t uh, asked questions and interviewed, you could tape that and then show it at your, at your uh, seminar. You can also invite speakers online at the seminar and tell them you're live, we want to ask you a few questions, and you, know, you have that. You can have it pre-recorded. There are many ways to do these, to have these speakers. It does not mean that every single speaker has to come to your, your presentation at the time you're doing that. They may not be available. They might be. They may be expensive. They might not want to, to, you know, to drive or fly to your presentation for this one-time thing. But you can create these videos and webinars that can be used in the best way today. The technology is there. You want to create also YouTube videos for your patients to review. It's a great advantage with YouTube channels. They're easily accessible. It's interesting, just, a, just maybe less than a few months ago, I remember on my phone, the YouTube, just the time that it took to upload it and see it and everything. Today, it's instantaneous. Press on the YouTube channel, boom, comes right up. Press on the one that you want to see and immediately it plays. There's no downside, there's no upside, there's no lag, there's nothing. It's quite amazing. Technology has changed. Why not use it to your advantage? You can do this on your presentation and have it play right there at your, 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 during the seminar presentation. Get on the internet. All you have to do is have access to it through your computer. Immediately play one of those videos from your YouTube channels if you want to. Create these and constantly update them. Use your marketing company. They do this all the time. They update them. It costs a little bit, that's true, but you know what? It's worth the price. It's worth the, what you're paying for. And write. Write articles. Write testimonials with explanations. Write blogs. If you're not a good writer, if you don't have the time, if you don't think you have the knowledge, take other articles that have been written by experts and share them. Share them on your YouTube channel. Share them on your Facebook page. Put, post them on your, on your uh, website, in your blog channel, and at the same time, give credit to the person who wrote that article. They would love that. 
They would love it because the more articles are being printed and they're being shared, it boosts up your credibility and at the same time it shows that not only you're doing more research but you're very qualified in this program. You want to use every single aspect of it. If you truly want to be successful in this program, you really have to get involved. You have to get involved in all aspects. You also want to motiv motivate your staff. You can't just be the only one promoting the services. You can't just be the one selling, applying, advertising, marketing, developing, you know, charging. You can't do that. You have to make sure that your staff themselves is well trained. They must attend, your staff must attend uh, an introductory uh, seminar. You have to have in your office a meeting and let them know that you're going to implement a new service. And if you've already implemented it, bring them back. If you've already, if you're already integrated now with the stem cell, bring them back. Have a meeting at least once a month. Say, let's talk about what we're doing. And invite them to understand, to read, to learn, to grow, to find out what's, what it's all about because your staff is going to be continuously interacting with the patients. They're going to be the ones communicating with what's going on. And they should be given material. Give them material and videos before and after presentation. Make sure that your staff knows what you know. I'm not asking about the technical components of it. I'm not asking about the medication part, which is perhaps above and beyond their, their ability to comprehend. I'm talking about just the concept itself. There are people and there are your staff. They should be taught what the concept of regenerative medicine is. What does it do? How does it work? and train them over and over again. Make sure that at all times the staff should be given confidence to understand but also to generate and, and share that information. It should be done at all times. And they should be encouraged, encouraged to bring their family members. We all have parents or grandparents or uncles and aunts. I mean all of us have someone that we know who is at that age that would benefit from this program. Bring them in. Let them. Let the, your your staff know that they should bring them in. It would boost up their confidence. Can you imagine if a staff member would say, "I brought in my mother, and she got this treatment, and she is raving about it. It's incredible how great she feels. She's able to go and pick up the grandkids now. She's able to bend over and and pick up things from the floor when they fall. She's able to go to the restroom and come back and sit down on the couch and not be in pain." Imagine all these benefits that you have. If that patient understands this and they relate this to your staff member, think of how they will feel. There's something else also that's important. Bonus them. Bonus your staff for working with you. <clears throat> Bonus them. This program is very lucrative. We already know that. I've got some doctors that are doing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars from a one-day seminar, one day only. So if you are to do this, why not bonus the staff? Why not share with them the wealth and give them incentive? Set goals as to what you're expecting the results to be. And if they meet those goals, you incentivize them that way as well. And here's something else which is important. Recognize your staff for the work that they do. You have a clinic. Staff is working with you. They're helping you with a presentation. Recognize them. Pick that person who is the employee of the month. If they brought you patients, if they able, were able to come up with something new, make them the employee of the month and make sure that they are recognized by the rest of the staff in your office so that everybody can benefit from that. Okay, let's talk about uh, something which is very close to my heart and I've seen this over and over again. I myself believe in it entirely. And that is that when you go to the doctor's office or to a doctor's office, whether it's a dentist or a, a chiropractor, a medical doctor, a surgeon, whatever the case may be, and you're sitting in there, especially today, the first thing that any one of us does is pick up our phone and then we look. We check our emails, we check our text, we follow up on the, some of the things that we were to do. That's what most people do. I've seen it, it's interesting, as I leave my office often and I get into the elevator, as soon as the door from the elevator closes, I'll see people standing in the elevator, immediately reach in their pocket, take out their cell phone and start looking. Now how long is the ride from where I am to downstairs? You know, a couple minutes? And then it doesn't matter if you're on a 20th floor or 50th floor, wherever it is, it's only a few minutes, a couple minutes, literally. But people immediately will pull up their phone and follow through. What's going on? What's going on? What's, what's happening? And they could check anything from Facebook to Messenger to Facebook uh, uh, posts to all the way to Instagram, every program. Everyone has something to do. 
Now, when they come to your office, you want them to do something else. Even if they're checking the phone, you want them to be able to look at a screen that you're promoting information. You see, right now I'm making a presentation. Do you really need the screen behind me telling you what to do? I'm only repeating exactly what is on the screen. You really don't need that. But if I were the only speaker and all you saw was me speaking and speaking again, especially since this is on a webinar, it might become boring. You might lose focus, you might lose attention. But the screen behind me, the presentation, if it's pleasantly portrayed and if it's put in such a professional way, makes it attractive. It makes you focused. It makes you follow through. And every time I click on my clicker here and it gives you the next presentation, you're able to follow through. That's what it's all about. When you see that picture coming up, you're looking at that. You see, I just clicked on that and I know all of you just look to that area now. Now, imagine when the person is sitting, your patient is sitting in the front room and they're sitting in there at your reception room and now they have their phone in their hands. And if you had a screen that could display not just the news of what's going on in the city, that's not what you want, but it could be literally customized to what you would want. And you could have, in this case, services, all your services that would be promoted. That would be one of the things that you have. It would also show the local weather. Not something, you know, what's happening in New York. I don't care if I live in Iowa, I don't care what the, the weather in New York is. I'm right here and I want to know my local weather. If it could also show me your Facebook page. Imagine that I display that Facebook page would show at all times and it would be there. It would show me a tickler of all kinds of messages. This is what I'm talking about in here. It would play the testimonials of all these patients that are in there. Every time I'm sitting in there, and if I come in two or three times a week at your office, and I'm sitting in there, and I know I'm watching on my phone, because the information is continuously changing, and it's being updated continuously, guess what? I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up and down from my phone back to that information, and subconsciously I'm going to be talked into coming in and reading about the news of what you're having here. The local news. This is the local news. It's such a technology today that it can over, in a sub subconscious way, feed me information about your, your, your clinic. It will also show your logo. It's quite amazing. You should see it. This presentation itself, it makes the reception room environment so much more pleasant. It's called MediRoom. Uh, I know that Attitude Marketing, which I've discussed with you many times before, they have a deal with them, something which is exceptional. It's incredible how it works. I would highly suggest you pay attention to that. Call them, find out about it, and it can promote your services. It will tell them about, by the way, we have regenerative medicine, and then it shows clips, all kinds of clips. It can be customized to whatever you want. So think of it as your own in-house television screen with whatever program you want, displaying all this information at any rate in any format that you like. Imagine that. And it is so professionally done and so inexpensive. You're talking about, you know, 100 bucks a month. That's all it is or something close to that. I think it's even less than that. Check with them, but I'm just telling you it is really worth it and will make the experience better. Remember, we don't just want to attract to our regenerative program patients from the outside or new potentials that we meet from the outside. We also want to generate patients from the inside. It's not just external marketing, but it's internal marketing. We want our patients, our current active population, perhaps to use the services for themselves. If not for themselves, for their friends and family members, acquaintances, neighbors, and colleagues. Absolutely. They each live in a place, and they have a neighbor to the right, a neighbor to the left, a neighbor in the front of them, and the neighbor in front of them. Right there, there are four neighbors that surround their home. Same thing when it comes to work. If they have a job, they have colleagues that they work with. They have parents, uncles, aunts. They have siblings. They have all kinds of people they have you know, uh, access to. They should generate patients for you. If they are educated and if they like what you do and they like what you say, it's going to make a big difference. All right, and let's talk about now innovation. Innovation is an extremely important component of marketing. And basically what it is is the ambition to continuously grow. The definition of ambition, by the way, is the word eager. Eagerness to succeed. That's what ambition is. 
And that's what you want, the constant innovation. You can't just stagnate. You can't just say, okay, I paid my fees to a marketing company. I have the poster. Now, let's do this. And we did it successfully last month. Goodness, we had so many new patients. But that's last month. This month, you have to change. You perhaps have to change the title of the lecture. Why not give it a new title? Why not give it a new name, something that will help you? You may want to shorten or lengthen your presentation. If you see that you're getting good at it and the people enjoyed it and your presentation was only 45 minutes, you might want to make it 50 minutes and then try 55 minutes then try an hour and five minutes. You might want to do this. Or if you see the people just couldn't take it, it was way too long, an hour and 20 minutes, they just couldn't handle it, then shorten it. You want to change that. You may want to change the date and time of the seminar. If you see that Wednesday is not as good, switch it to Tuesday. Tuesday might be a better day. Monday is a complicated day because it's the beginning of the week. Friday is too close to the weekend. Change around the date. Exercise all your knowledge and employ constant innovation to continuously make it better. Find out a way to do this. You may want to invite different speakers, as I mentioned earlier. Changing the speakers will change the, uh, uh, the presentation itself and change the content, obviously. You might want to diversify the offers that you're making. Perhaps in your offer you're saying that we will give you a free test and um, we will finance the first payment. You might want to change that. You might want to say the test you have to pay for if you come in within the next 48 hours, the, 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 the qualifying blood test, but however, if you do qualify and you sign up for it on that day, then the payment, the, the, uh, uh, we will knock off another 10% from the treatment. Diversify the payment plan. Diversify the offers that you're making. Perhaps you might want to give them, if the treatment is beneficial, you know, they'll get also two free massages. Something that will help them. As long as it's legal, as long as it's ethical, give them things to help them change that diversification. Make sure that you're doing it properly. You want to change continuously, I mentioned earlier, about the flyers. Attitude Marketing has prepared a slew of flyers. They are professional, they are exquisite, they are elegant, they have everything that it takes to boost up your clinic and gives you, give you a, a better image, a more professional image. Use these posters. As I mentioned in another webinar, take the pictures perhaps to Kinko's. It's an inexpensive and there are Kinko's all over the place. Take it to them, have them enlarge it, and then laminate it, and then keep them for future usage. Then put them in different parts of the office. That's all it takes, and I'm just telling you, it will make a big difference. You might want to enlarge them, perhaps at a certain uh, width and height, and buy a frame, and every couple of weeks as you change them, just put them back in that frame. Just buy one nice, beautiful frame, and you may have them perhaps throughout the office in a couple places will make a difference. Con continuous innovation means that you're going to always, always give more. And here's something which I want to mention also is many of you are going to be giving out free lunches and perhaps dinners or maybe snacks at the, uh, at the seminar or even if you're doing it at your office in the presentation. Change those snacks. Change the quality, the quantity. Change the type of snacks. I was at a presentation and they had served something which was really cute. <clears throat> it was a nicely you know, put bowl, which is made out of styrofoam. I'm not even sure when they got it. But it actually had their name on it. It was so pleasant to see that. And next to it there was a napkin and the napkin it said, we'd love to see you again. And it had the name of the pre presenter. Little things like this make a difference. Innovate, continuously innovate. Continuous innovation means constantly figure out a way to make it better. By the way, this is the way we should lead our life in everything that we do, in everything. Why? You want to make sure that in life you are constantly growing, you're constantly, you know, changing, you're constantly evolving. And in order to do that, whether it's in a marriage with our spouses or in a relationship that we have with our children or the relationship that we have with our colleagues at work or even with ourselves, you always have to figure out a way to reinvent yourself and grow. Always be at, you know, have the discipline to find out how you can enhance your life professionally, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically, in every single aspect. This is important to pay attention to. You might want to change also about your fees. 
be careful that the fees that you're charging for the services don't reflect what you want but what you can get there's a major difference you may want to earn a certain amount of money but if it's not conducive to your area or not conducive to the people that you're speaking with given the fact that you live in such, in such a city that may not be the right thing to do you may say well you know, I was told this amount would be right, or, or I know a friend of mine charges that amount, or the rep told me to charge as much as this amount. Don't listen to all these, question, to, to all these comments and, and just take their initial um, uh, evaluation on it. Analyze it yourself. Make sure that the fees themselves are reasonable in your area. Make sure that what you're charging is reasonable. If for your area this is okay, then that's fine. And you can test that. Review also the payment options that you're giving them. Perhaps you might want to give them a longer payment option or perhaps a better payment option. Review that, it'll make a difference. Offer perhaps more services for the same payment. You may say that if they do pay for this program, they will also receive these two other products or these two other uh, um, uh, services at no extra charge. This will make a difference. And review also your budget. Budget is made up of two things, the expenses and the, and the revenue. You want to constantly at all times review these two. You want to make sure that what you've got is paying for itself and leaving you something at the end of the day. If your expenses on this whole program is say $10,000 and you're collecting obviously no more than $10,000, then you want to ask yourself, is this program really beneficial? Do I benefit from it and is it worth my time? At the same time, you want to make sure that you're setting goals that are reasonable. Don't think that you're going to spend four or $5,000 in such a program and collect $500,000 in a month. That's not reasonable. That, those numbers are just too big. You're setting goals that are way above and beyond your aspirations and you're going to get disappointed. You need to set a program that is reasonably priced, comfortable for, the, for your area, at the same time affordable for all the people and everybody will be happy. You will benefit, there's no question about it. There is something which is important in this case and that is the ultimate guide, regenerative medicine, is, is, it's an overview. So these are the things that I've covered so far. I've covered the part of how to utilize your Google Drive to make sure that you pay close attention to that. Attitude Marketing has spent tremendous amount of time, effort, energy and it's well professionally done it's got all the content in it it's got all the information that you need and it will keep you updated continuously use it and know how to use it understand what it does you can have access to it on your phone you can have access to it on your tablet when you're traveling wherever you are all of that information and by the way all the leads are being fed into that Google Drive so as the leads come in make sure you find out who they are what they're doing also, pay attention to your Facebook page. The outcome of the Facebook will be very, very lucrative, both from a, uh, a practical standpoint as well as from a financial standpoint, if you pay attention to Facebook. It's an amazing tool. Let's use it properly, make sure that it works. Maximize your follow-up results. If you didn't quite understand that, rewind this video and watch it again. It's yours, it's there to be watched and understood. Encourage testimonials. It's important to make sure that all your patients are happy with your services. And I'm telling you for a fact that if you ask them to professionally and in a kind and polite way help you promote your services, they'll do that. They don't mind it. People don't mind helping others. It's always something that they like to do. People love to help one another, especially something that they, uh, that they benefited from. At the same time, you have to promote more interest with everyone. I covered this at great length. Make sure that all these interests are being paid attention to. Staff is very important. As they say, the staff is the backbone of your office. It is exactly what it's all about. The staff are the ones that are making your office grow. Understand that with their help, you become a team of experts and you can multiply your services and proliferate them at an exponential rate if you pay attention to that. The reception room uh, screen display, something which I highly recommend. If you already have a display, speak to Attitude Marketing of what this one will do and compare and you'll see the difference. I'm telling you that for those that are using it right now, it is amazing result and the expense is so negligible that it doesn't make sense not to pay attention to that. The technology is there today, so why not use it? 
continuous innovation. Reinvent yourself. Make sure that you're always ahead on what you're doing. Last but not least, pay attention to the fees that are being charged. Make sure that the fees that are being charged are always reviewed. And is this the right way? Is that something that you want to do properly? So, <clears throat> now I'd like to finish by saying something else. Enjoy. Enjoy this program. Enjoy what you're doing. Make sure that what you're doing is to what you want to do. Because Regenerative medicine prom promotes longevity. It helps a lot of patients. It's amazing what it does. And we know for a fact that the results have been phenomenally successful. So enjoy the fact that you're able to render a service to patients who will greatly benefit from it and will li live a happier life. Enjoy the whole practice about that. Regenerative medicine also promotes health care. It promotes a better living, a better lifestyle. Why not enjoy it and sharing it with the people? There's nothing wrong with that. You can make just a business card that says, ask me about regenerative medicine and put a number. And keep, and you can get them from one of those websites today that you can get four or five hundred of them for literally a couple dollars, no more than that, less than ten dollars, in color. And put your phone number on it, put your cell phone number and put your website. And then keep it in your pocket. Have two, three hundred cards. Wherever you go, you're out with your friends, you're out with your family, you're shopping, you're, you're, you're going somewhere, you're visiting, you're going to a seminar, wherever it is, hand out those cards, hand out those cards everywhere. Ask me about it, ask me about this. And you'll be amazed how many people will call you and say, what is regenerative medicine? What does it do? How does it help? And you'll be so pleased by the fact that so many people talk about it. You'll become an expert at it. Another thing is regenerative medicine promotes goodness. When people feel better, they live happier. They become kinder. They themselves enjoy a better lifestyle. Why not help them out? Why not? Last but not least, know for a fact that you will succeed. If you do it properly, when this program is well implemented, you will succeed. You will succeed in such a way that the program can take your clinic to a level that you never expected before. Programs that are implemented properly can always be beneficial to the patients, can always be beneficial to the clinic, but you have to ask your question. Are you enjoying it? Are you having a good time doing that? And if not, then you may want to review this. And at the same time, when you say, it takes me to the next level, what level is that? I can tell you that being a consultant for so many years, I've seen clinics grow 2%, 20%, and some of them hundreds of percent. Why is that? What is the difference between a clinic that increases by 10% and one that increases by 80%, 90%? The difference is the ambition, the eager desire to develop and grow in such a way that is beneficial not at the expense of others, but at the benefits of everyone. And that makes a difference. Enjoy it and have a good time doing it. Have a good time doing what you're doing. Love it in such a way that it makes sense. Make it so that you're blessed, not only as a healthcare practitioner, but also as a businessman to help a lot of people. This is what it's all about. And I hope and pray that you will, at all times, make this happen. You can do it. And as it says in my own book, interestingly enough, you can succeed in everything that you do if you pay attention to it. I thank you very much for taking the time and God bless you to be successful in all your endeavors. And should you at any given time have questions, irrespective of the kind of question, you know you can always reach me. I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you.